here today to go on the internet and spread lies. Here is one fake weapon fact for every weapon in Splatoon 3. The Sploosh-O-Matic is considered by some to be the first weapon in Splatoon that you could wear on your head between matches. The angular design of the Splattershot Jr. was made to remind you to paint every single corner of the map with this weapon. On New Year's, who needs fireworks when you can have custom Splattershot Jr. players throw 75 torpedoes in the air all at the same time? The splash matic is mistaken by some squids as a food thermometer, which blew up at least 14 meals last Squidmas. Maybe this year we can make it 12? Modification techniques to increase the paint output of the Aerospray RG have only caused them to randomly explode mid-match due to how thin the base weapon is. The gold color of the Aerospray RG allows opponents to find you faster, to send you back to your base to stop painting for a while. At least three young Inklings have visited the Splatlands clinic this week after trying to chew open a splatter shot. We think it's the shiny, mustard-like design on the front of the weapon that makes it look so yummy! The Tenetech splatter shot occasionally scares Octopi into thinking an Inkling is staring right at them on the battlefield due to its eye mask-like design. Spooky! A jellyfish stole a hero shot replica from an agent recently and tried to use it as a surfboard. It uh, didn't work out too well as they, well, uh, they broke the weapon in the process by hitting a large rock. Inklings sometimes mistake the front of the 52 gals weapon for its handle because they're both pink. Please be more careful and stop grabbing this weapon by the nozzle. The NZAP-85 is classified as a boomerang in at least three counties. Some believe the Splattershot Pro can be disassembled and turned into a bottle rocket. It never ends well. Players have been banned before from Turf War when they try to cover the yellow tip of the Forge Splattershot Pro. At a glance, it almost looks like the Kensa Splattershot Pro, a weapon that's not allowed for use in the Splatlands. Rumor has it they shoved concrete in the front of the 96 gal to make the pressure higher when you fire it. Did you know the Jet Squelcher makes for a fantastic necklace accessory in a pinch? That's why it's got that big old handle. Companies have tried to make water bottles that look like the Splattershot Nova, but Sheldon has a special patent that has ceased production permanently. If you're feeling silly, you could grab the Luna Blaster by both of its little space ball things instead of the handle. I don't recommend it, but it looks funny. A Luna Blaster Neo's favorite catchphrase is Neo you see me, Neo you don't before they uh, send you back to spawn. At least four Inklings a week get splatted because they try to fiddle with the wires of their blaster in the middle of a match. Stop doing that! Some have wondered if the flames on the range blaster's design imply the weapon could make a good cooking tool. The answer is no! An Octoling tried to sneak into a match with markers instead of crayons on their Clash Blaster. However, they were quickly banned before they were able to try. Sounds a little suspicious, huh? Maybe, just maybe, the writing implements on the Clash Blaster do matter? The color scheme of the Rapid Blaster may have been inspired by an ancient human food chain organization known as McDonald's. The Rapid Blaster Pro is sometimes used as a limbo bar. Squid and Octoling forms are banned during these events, though. It also gives a more positive meaning to the phrase, Hello, can you go? Which is often reserved for Inklings and Octolings stuck with negative points in anarchy battles. Did you know? To train Inkling eyes to see the striking blue color of the L3 nozzle nose, nothing else in the Splatlands is allowed to be painted that specific color. Be careful! Trying to cut the hose of the H3 nozzle nose will make it instantly explode. This usually happens when a small fry bites it while it's active in Salmon Run. 
The staff of Ammo Knights hate the squeezer. Its sales have been great these days, but um, hyperactive inklings sometimes knock them to the ground, shattering them instantly. The carbon roller's extremely fast flick has led to situations where inklings will accidentally break items in their home from hitting the roller's release mechanism. Oops! Here's some good news for the Splatlands economy. The annual burst bomb throwing competition was purposely placed right after the Splatsville shipment of carbon roller decos arrived. Many inklings and octolings burned their savings that weekend for a roller and a participation ticket. One of the largest pieces of inkling art ever made was done by having eight splat roller players enact in a turf war over a massive sheet of paper. You can see it to this day in Museum de Alfonsino. Using a dynamo roller too much can make an inkling unable to use a regular roller because they get so used to the heavier weight of the dynamo. Be careful! Did you know? It is illegal to use a flingsa roller during a jousting tournament. Attempts to store juice in the big swig roller's cup-shaped mechanism can cause sugar and chemicals to ruin the roller. Please stop doing this. One time, an inkling tried to hypnotize an entire enemy team by drawing a massive swirl on the battlefield with an ink brush. However, it failed because the enemy's ink strike was thrown just after he finished his two minutes of work. At least he still had another minute to play Turf War. Ink Brush and Ink Brush Nouveau players enjoy playing sword fighting with each other using their brushes. The Nouveau, uh, always breaks first. Octo brush bristles are often stolen by Lil Judd to make new hair brushes. No one really seems to notice, though. At least three classic squiffers are lost every week when they get lodged in the armor of a retreating scrapper. Of course. One in every 1,000 splat chargers needs to be replaced after an octoling has the great idea to try to advance weapon technology by using it as a lance. It doesn't work like that. Snapping the scope off of a splatter scope is considered a criminal offense, as inklings should only own one of each weapon. Watch out for rust! The average Eater 4K user only cleans their weapon once a month. <sighs> an Eater 4K scope had to recently be recycled after an inkling tried to put holes in the barrel to use the weapon as an oversized flute. Did you know? Bamboozlers are sprayed with a bitterant now after a turf war battle ended early due to a bamboozler player's weapon having not one, not two, but three massive bites taken out of it. The culprit was never found. The goo tuber was actually built to help trip enemy inklings in the heat of battle, but this feature didn't make it into production. The Snipe Rider 5H was actually invented to subliminally remind inklings and octolings to do their homework after an afternoon of turf war, as requested by the Splatsville Department of Education. Have you heard? Slosher stacking is a favorite game amongst young inklings. Everyone takes a turn placing a bucket on the stack until it falls. Only a few injuries happen every year, so that's pretty good. At least two Zipcaster specials have broken in the last month, from octolings trying to slide down them using the handle of a slosher deco while riding in the bucket in octopus form. Sounds fun, but I don't know if you should turn your slosher deco into a slide. The tri-slosher is blue now because it's a representation of how sad Inklings are over losing its traditional green color from Splatoon 1 and Splatoon 2! The sloshing machine's signature silver ring is so small to prevent longer tentacled cephalopods from getting their appendages stuck in the weapon mid-match. It still happens, though. A lot. There was once a time that Sheldon considered giving the Blob Lobber two firing modes, which could be selected by turning a small faucet on the Blob Lobber's body. It was considered uh, too complex. 
pouring a slosher's worth of frozen ink cubes or any other frozen items into an explosher is considered a crime. This was first banned after two inklings used it for a gender reveal party. The mini splatling cannot and should not be used as a trumpet. The details of the resulting explosion are no longer on file with Ammonite's staff. Despite not being similar at all in size or weight, at least one inkling throws and breaks their zinc mini splatling every week instead of throwing their toxic mist. While it may look delicious, adding a faucet to the tank of a heavy splatling is banned in 24 Inkadian counties due to chugging contests on the battlefield. Did you know? Filling a Hydra Splatling's tank only a partial amount produces different sounds when hit. Because an Inkling can only purchase one of each weapon, some individuals have tried to cheat the system to get more than one and make a drum set. Alright, you try to emulate a real ballpoint pen with the ballpoint Splatling. It causes very adverse effects on the battlefield. You try stepping in four colors of ink at once. Using the Nautilus's shiny exterior to blind opponents is strictly forbidden in Anarchy Battle. The first Dapple Duelies were invented by an Octoling lost in the desert, looking for a way to clean her teeth. The Dapple Duelies Nouveau, contrary to popular belief, does not make for a good lasso. Inklings uh, tend to throw them too far. A popular craze in the Splatlands is to try and spin splat delays on the floor like a pinball. Too bad they almost always go flying and hit another inkling instead. Unfortunately, trying to fire true hot glue out of the Glugadulies is how an entire lobby of eight octolings needed to go to the hospital last week. After the dual squelcher was banned from stores, the dual e squelcher, for a while, was coated with a cherry scented red paint to entice more inklings to buy them instead. The dark tetra dualies were a compromise between inkling and octoling weapon scientists, as many believed that the octo dualies' eight dodge rolls would have been too difficult to use appropriately. The Splatbrella doesn't have Ink Storm in the Splatlands because Sheldon felt bad about giving an umbrella a special it couldn't even protect itself from. Did you know? Seasonally accurate models of the tent umbrella are stored in the basement of Ammo Knights to this very day. Wouldn't you like an orange colored one for the drizzle season? When the human era media known as Mary Poppins was first brought to the big screen, Inklings tried to see if the undercover umbrella would let them land safely from tall heights. It didn't. The Tri Stringer isn't popular outside of the Splatlands because the specific wavelength of stingrays in Acadia could cause the Tri Stringer's bombs to explode preemptively. Not fun, unless you're the stingray user. When first invented, the Reflux 450 really could fire 450 shots in a single ink tank. However, they were all extremely weak, and the weapon was widely disliked. Unlike what the rumors claim, the Splatana Stamper is quite bad at cutting trees. Please use the ink swiping attack for this instead. And finally, nothing really stops Inklings from using the Splatana Wiper to just hit opposing players on the head. Besides the three week ban they'll get for doing it. <laughs> well, do you feel informed? No? Good. These facts are fake, but you can tell your friends about them. Don't forget to subscribe for more Splatoon 3 shenaniganry in the future. <laughs> Thank you for listening, and I hope you have a good one out there.